Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm John Comel, Chair of uh, the uh, Power Authority and Cal Corporation Board, and uh, pleased to have this opportunity to uh, chair a regular finance uh, committee meeting. Uh, with me today, we have a uh, full squad turnout. Dennis Trainer, B. Gonzalez, Lori Wheelock, Louis Warren, Cecily Morris, and Michael Cusick along with uh, Justin Adam and uh, the Kneipa and Canal Corporation staff. As always, the meeting's been duly noticed as required by open meetings law, and I'm pleased to formally call it to order. Uh, we've all had an opportunity to review uh, the agenda. I'd ask uh, for a motion to adop adopt the agenda as, as presented. I'll we'll move. Second. second. All right, heard a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, motion carries. The agenda uh, is adopted. Uh, well, we uh, have a variety of topics to cover, as we typically do. We will uh, start our meeting in executive session. And uh, I'd ask for a motion to conduct uh, that executive session pursuant to Section 105 of the Public Officers Law. So moved. Thank you, Dennis. Second. Have a se second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will uh, convene uh, in executive session for a little bit. And uh, we will be back at you to resume our meeting as soon as practical. Thanks very much. I could uh, ask for a motion to uh, resume our meeting in open session. So moved. Thanks, Dennis. Have a second. Second, Trustee Warren. Thanks, Lois. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, we're back in open session. And as always, no votes were taken during executive session. So welcome back, uh, everyone. Uh, we will now convene, uh, reconvene, and uh, pursue our uh, stated agenda. Adam will start with an update on uh, results of operations, and then we've got uh, three action items to follow. Adam, the floor is yours. Sure. Morning, trustees, uh, NIPA colleagues, members of the public. Uh, we'll go through the first uh, uh, month of the year, January, uh, just to give some backdrop. So we do have some uh, headwinds as we enter into the year, um, uh, driven by the fact that natural gas prices have fallen significantly. Uh, when we did the budget, there were about three three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, they are under two dollars today, so significant drop in uh, natural gas prices, which which you know is a leading indicator for our overall prices. So um, that that's you know something we'll be dealing with this year, January, and now we see February, uh, two very warm months, so a little bit warmer than expected. Also uh, presenting somewhat of a challenge there. Um, but on the plus side, you know, our hedges were very effective and provided that protection against that price drop. So it's good that we were hedged. And we also, um, uh, by the weather being a little bit warmer, we were also able to, uh, we had more precipitation up north. So we got better results from our generation, probably 10% better. Uh, but also because of the weather, we didn't have um, any significant ice gym related issues. So that helped, you know, throughput and uh, generation uh, be able to be above what was the target. So those are the things that were working in our favor. So off to, a, you know, all said and done, off to a decent start. Uh, we'll have the update for Jan for February at the full board. Um, preliminary numbers there suggest looks a lot like Janu January. So uh, pretty much the same. So it's all all good news there in terms of running, um, you know, slightly ahead of target expenses, also well controlled so far, don't see any significant issues there. The, our full year forecast, next slide please, uh, just has us, you know, still maintaining our budget and our target 
uh, sufficiently. So we'll update that in the range as we go on through the year. But right now, you know, nothing seems to be uh, presenting an issue with us making our targets. Uh, but, you know, just to follow up on some discussion from the last committee meeting on issues related, related to supply chain, uh, inflation, or as it, it affects um, some of our projects. So, you know, as you know, there are, um, inflation has gone down in the most part around the economy, but not with respect to specialty items and equipment that we purchase for our uh, transmission projects. So those are, are sort of in a different, different category altogether. But uh, first, we'll just talk a little bit about what's happened to lead times significantly longer. If you look at some of these items that we're looking to uh, purchase, they've gone from 26 months out to 60 months of lead time you need in order to get yourself in the queue to secure some of these items. So a lot of challenges there, um, not to mention the fact that um, also challenges with the Panama Canal, not having you know, a significant depths of water probably requires some dredging on the geopolitical issues that are taking place in the Mideast around the Red Sea, also pre presenting some challenges with items coming um, through there as well. So certainly we see supply chain uh, challenges ahead and also you know, decoupling from China, regardless of the political outcome uh, is also something we see on the horizon. So we're gonna have to diversify our suppliers and find other places to get goods so that we're not so hostage to uh, China manufacturing in the future. So these are some of the challenges that we see and we're taking lots of steps to uh, mitigate and address those. Next slide, just to give you a sense of what's happened to the price of some of these items, this gives you a look back from the year 2000 to today, and you can see steady increase in, in prices for these items, but you can see that significant jump from 2020 um, up till today, 2024, significantly higher. Um, you know, this is an issue of a lot of people right now buying the same equipment, which is very specialized, has very long useful lives, 30, 40 years in some cases. And it's, you know, as a result of what's happening in the overall electric grid around the country, everybody's going through the same sort of rebuilding issues we have here in New York. And there's really a limited number of suppliers out there to provide these uh, specialized equipment. And given the fact that people see this as a, a sort of a, a, a peak and a bump, it's not something that's sustainable which would warrant increasing manufacturing capacity to meet this demand. So it's gonna be this bottleneck of long lead times, higher prices, uh, as everyone sort of gets through this at the same time. So we're seeing this, just wanted to give the committee an update on some of these trends that you know are sort of bucking some of the trends you're seeing elsewhere or hearing about elsewhere. So just to make sure that people are aware of, of this particular issue for situational awareness. Uh, any questions? Yeah, Adam, give us some context for what you just presented. Is this, are you talking about 10% of what we're spending? Are you talking about 90% of what we're spending that's uh, bearing the, the brunt of, of the cost increases and time delays? Give us some context here. Well, it, I mean, it's, it's particularly affecting some of our larger transmission projects. So as we speak about um, projects even like, you know, uh, East Garden City, which we're going to, you know, we have on the agenda today, um, that we have an in-service date of 2029. In order to meet that date, we really need to get orders in place today uh, to have any hope of meeting that date. So it's, it's giving us, you know, we need to put orders in early, secure our place in the queue. Um, these items, you know, in, in, as far as costs go, can make up to you know, 50% or more of the total cost of the projects. So it does have a significant bearing on costs of, of all these projects. And again, this is something that, um, whether it be the NISO or the PSC or uh, other operators in this area, uh, everybody's aware of these issues. So it's not something that's unique to NIPA, it's something that we're all experiencing at the same time. So everybody is aware. Uh, so it's just something that is a challenge. I think, you know, we're, like I said, we're taking steps 
to mitigate it by getting ahead of things in terms of these orders. Um, we're looking to expand our supplier base so that we have more diversification of suppliers to go to. And we're looking at you know, other different ways of sourcing our materials so that we can mitigate some of the challenges from um, what we see here. Is there, are we at a point uh, where it jeopardizes project execution uh, you know, overall, or is it, well, it's just gonna cost us more and it's gonna, we're gonna incur time delays, but we'll ultimately get there. I mean, are, we, are there any risks that we need to pull back or pull away from? Um, certain projects because of these run-ups and delays? No, I don't think so at, at this point today. I think that we were, we've were we accounted for a lot of this within our financial plan. So we've allocated uh, funds in anticipation so that I think we are well positioned there. It's just a question of better planning and being able to you know anticipate um, the longer lead time. So we just have to do things earlier, quicker uh, to get ourselves ahead of it. But I don't see anything jeopardizing any existing project uh, that we have ongoing at this time. Okay. And then the topic of planning, so we're only two months into the year, but we're six months uh, out from uh, when you built the plan. So you're saying no major hiccups, no major surprises, no major issues that you foresee at this point that weren't foreseen back in September, October, November, when you put the plan together. So as you crystal ball the balance of 24, you still feel good about uh, the, the game, the financial game plan that we have in place. Uh, yes, I do, because, you know, as I mentioned, uh, the big, you know, surprise I would say is the drop in natural gas prices. Um, but that's where, you know, our hedging program has come in to uh, mitigate the effect of that. So uh, that is a big change from what we originally saw, the warmer winter, right? So January, February, probably one of the warmest <clears throat> of uh, those two months together in quite some time. Right. Um, so, you know, that's, but that's, you know, that's something we didn't expect. But I think, again, we, we, uh, we have better, you know, generation numbers than we were expecting. So we have things to offset those surprises. So uh, as far as I can see, we're gonna, you know, continue to remain on target. So nothing that I see threatening our ability to meet the plan. All right, any other questions for Adam on our core financials, core business? If not, uh, oh, just ahead. one, just, just one question, Chairman Kamal. Uh, Adam, as you look out at the natural gas price curve, uh, going forward, is is the expectation that that natural gas prices will stay uh, muted through uh, spring and summer of this year? What's what's the outlook? And so right now, as far as we can see, it is it is going to remain weaker. Uh, there is a um, an oversupply of natural gas um, throughout the world, and um, so we're just feeling some of that right now. The weather obviously contributes to some of that. Um, but right now we, we see that to be uh, somewhat under pressure, but hopefully it'll revert back to sort of a, a norm or a mean where it's above $3, between 3 and $4, which has been the historical norm uh, for us. Um, we hope to get back there, but uh, for the next, I would say six months, we're seeing depressed prices. Thank you for your- you know, Good news to so some people have to pay it. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's good news for people who have to buy it, like our yep. fuel or or customers or other people. So there is there is good news on the other side of that. Abs absolutely. Well, this has been helpful this morning, Adam. Thank you. Sure. All right, Adam. Uh, no, in terms of uh, canals and our uh, quarterly release of funds. All right. This is the normal quarterly release of funds. Um, $27 million to meet the $107 million budget. Uh, the canals are, are certainly running right now on budget. So uh, we think this is sufficient to cover the, the next quarter. So um, would recommend an, uh, an approval of the release. 
Uh, you just said they're running on budget, no surprises, nothing we need to know. Too early for surprises on canals? Yep, that's correct. All right, if I can have a motion to uh, recommend this item to the full board for adoption. So moved. So moved. There's motion and a second in there, Karen, to sort that out. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, Adam, uh, voluntary contribution to the state energy programs. Yes, yeah, so as you recall, we, uh, every year in the budget for the last several years, <clears throat> the budget has authorized up to $20 million for NIPA to make a contribution to the state in support of statewide energy programs. Uh, this number has been at $20 million um, back since 2018. Uh, I would say two years ago, we, we reached a, uh, an agreement with the Division of Budget to have this 20 million phased out over time. So uh, two years ago, it went from 20 to 17 and a half. Last year, it went to 15. This year, it goes to 10. And then the following year, we'll go to five and then zero. So we're at the, uh, the mark to make the 10. And uh, again, we have to um, authorize the release, which means that you know, after making this contribution, you know, none of our debt service coverage ratios or other things that are, we're needed to maintain are in jeopardy as a result. Therefore, it's deemed uh, feasible and advisable to authorize this voluntary contribution. Um. I always look at this as a dividend to parent um, in corporate world. Um, Adam said, planned, anticipated uh, rating agency. Everybody's in tune. So uh, unless anyone has some questions, um, I'd ask yeah, for a yeah. motion and, and recommend this. Yeah, and item. I would just, just add that the, 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 the phase out is really you know, related to the conversations we've had around the canals. So right. this is a, a way that the state is recognizing the increased burden we have with the canals. So, you know, I just wanna make it clear that this reduction from the 20 to zero is their way of acknowledging um, that and, and making it easier for NIPA to meet the uh, obligations of the canals. And as you are aware, you know, right now in the, in the governor's proposed budget, there's $50 million of capital for the canals as well. So, you know, between the two, the state is, is making available, should that be approved, you would add it together and save it, you know, $70 million towards um, helping NIPA meet its obligations with the canals. I'll move the motion, John. Thanks, Dennis. Have a second. I'll second, Trustee Warren. Thanks, Lewis. Any other questions? Otherwise, all in favor, aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carried. All right, thanks very much, uh, Adam. Uh, Thank you. The next, uh, or the remaining uh, item on our uh, discussion agenda, Andy's gonna present East Garden City substation upgrade. Good morning. Uh, I'm here to present just this one item today. It is for the East Garden City substation upgrade. Next slide, please. Today, we're recommending approval of a, the execution of a development agreement with the New York Independent System Operator and the release of initial capital expenditures in the amount of $50 million to the Board of Trustees at their March meeting. This substation upgrade is a designated public policy project for the New York Independent System Operators Long Island Offshore Wind Export Public Policy Transmission Need, accepted by the authority as the incumbent transmission owner. Pursuant to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission approved open access transmission tariff, incumbent transmission owners retain the right to build own, operate, and recover costs for upgrades to their facilities. Further, per the tariff, the ISO requires the incumbent tra transmission owner to execute a development agreement as proposed by the selected developer in the solicitation. The targeted 
The targeted date for execution of the agreement is March 29th, 2024, to meet the ISO's required in service date of May 2029. A portion of the project was previously approved by the board and included in the 2024 capital plan, as well as the four year capital plan. The initial expenditures of $50 million are for securing production slots for long lead time items. And as Adam mentioned in his presentation, we're seeing some things such as phase angle regulators for this project going from on average a 26 month lead time to 60 months. And shunts also part of this project going from 24 months to 55 months. Down payments for design of those major pieces of equipment, land acquisitions, initiating of regulatory filings, including an abandonment incentive, excuse me, incentive. And then once we have um, received our incentive, um, we'll be back to the board for further release of funds. Any questions? So we've got the cart ahead of the horse here, Andy, but it's circumstantial uh, in terms of where we find ourselves and uh, the market conditions that coincidentally or not so coincidentally, Adam uh, recapped earlier, correct? Correct. Um, and uh, in terms of us uh, authorizing uh, expenditures ahead of uh, the uh, execution of the development agreement, the the exposure to us is somewhere between limited and nil, right? Correct, sir. Um, we're asking for the $50 million in order to start entering into these agreements. We can always cancel these agreements uh, with minimal cost. So the actual expend, we're not approving the expenditure, we're approving um, your, your ability to uh, get, get in the, their pipe, the provider's pipeline. Correct. Got it. Okay. Uh, other questions from anyone on the uh, proposal? If not, I'd ask for a motion to recommend this item to the full board for adoption. So moved. Thanks, Dennis. Second. Thanks, B. Uh, unless there's any other questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carried. All right, Andy. Thanks very much. Thank you. So, uh, remainder of our agenda uh, falls under uh, the consent uh, agenda. Um, Everyone's hopefully had an opportunity to at least uh, scan those materials. If uh, anyone has any questions for anybody, happy <clears throat> to entertain those. Otherwise, I'd ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Thanks, Dennis. Second. Thanks very much, Lewis. Uh, unless anyone has any questions, I'd ask, I mean, all in favor, rather, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. All right. Uh, all of uh, those actions will be uh, reported out and acted on at our uh, board meeting in a couple of weeks. Uh, unless anything, uh, anyone has anything else to bring before us, uh, that concludes uh, and completes our agenda uh, for today. Our next regularly scheduled finance committee uh, meeting is in a couple months, May 7th, uh, per my notes. And uh, with that, uh, I'd ask for a motion to close uh, this meeting. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. All right, Dennis Lewis, you're doing the heavy lifting here. Way to go, right to the finish line. <laughs> all, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thanks very much, uh, everyone. Uh, good discussion. Good meeting. Thank you, uh, Adam, uh, Andy, uh, Justin, and team. I think we'll take a short break, and then some of us will reconvene uh, 
momentarily for uh, governance committee. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great day.